You take off Melissa, it doesn't make sense. You take off Margaret, it doesn't make sense. You take off this one. So that's why everyone's back. In Beverly Hills, whether you like these people or not, Kyle is not even on the whiteboard. We're not getting rid of Kyle. Zero percent chance. Erica Jane, a zero percent chance. Erica Jane is now in the top, I would say, at least 10 of most protected housewives. There's not even a discussion that we're getting rid of Erica Jane from Beverly Hills. She's a great housewife. Kyle, we're not getting rid of. We're not getting rid of Sutton. Sutton is the whole damn show last season. She brings everything. Garcelle, we're not getting rid of Garcelle. So those four are not starters. So after Amory going, we have two names that go on the whiteboard. One is Jory Kemsley and the other is Crystal Kahn. We're either getting rid of both of them, we're getting rid of none of them, or we're getting rid of one of them. Kyle, Erica, Garcelle, Sutton, they don't even enter the equation. So Beverly Hills and, and figuring it out is not as hard. And this is also Evolution, Alex Baskin, it's Vanderpump. Same production company where we keep everyone. So it's an easier franchise to figure out than most because we only have two options, Dorit or Crystal. Man, this is good for Dorit. They like Dorit. They like Dorit. And look, she too does nothing. Crystal is more the real deal. She has her coconut water. She has, you know, a famous husband. You know, and Crystal has like real money and you know where it comes from. And Crystal is out at American Music Awards and Grammy. She's in the scene. Like Crystal is, travels in the same scene-ish as like a Kathy Hilton. She's more Beverly Hill. She's more money than a Dorit, right? But they love Dorit. Dorit doesn't do anything wrong. She does the job. I mean, I don't know. I don't really know if Dorit would have gone either way. Whereas I don't think... Juan not coming to the reunion did not cost Robin her job. I don't know if Dorit was on the chopping block, so I don't know if it really mattered. But telling everyone that Kyle sent her this text, and I find it authentic. I do not think this is staged by Dorit and Kyle. Exposing Kyle's text to Erica and then it becoming a thing and Dorit and Kyle ending the reunion in a worse place than where they started, and Kyle having lunch with Sutton, and it still being weird between Dorit and Kyle. I'm sure Alex Baskin is telling Kyle, do not talk to Dorit. I am sure, because we all know how this works, I am sure Alex Baskin calls Dorit and is like, listen, can't promise anything until it's announced. Read between the lines, do yourself a favor, do not speak to Kyle, period. They want Kyle and Dorit to come face-to-face -face on camera when they start filming. That is what they want. It's not such a fractured friendship. I think it'll be a whole season of the two of them fighting to probably have resolution at the end of next season. But I guarantee you that Alex Baskin or someone at the production company calls Dorit and says, do not answer her text. Do not speak to Kyle. I'm convinced of that. Can't tell you if your job is safe, but read between the lines. You want to come back next season, girl? Don't speak to her. That's going to happen on camera. I don't think it like saved her job, but it like saved her job. Kyle saving this. And now we're going to have a season of Dorit versus Kyle. And it's going to be a good season. There we go. It ain't going to be a, we'll have Mo moving out of the house. Mo looking for something. I think we'll see Morgan. It's going to be a good season. But I think they probably would have kept Dorit anyway. I'm sh more shocked that they let Crystal go. But I guarantee you Dorit got that call. And it's all going to happen on air. And it's going to be authentic. And I do think it kind of saved Dorit's job. It certainly didn't hurt. This Friday with Sarah Fraser, spending way more time on this. Oh, also, I think we're going to see two newbies here. We got rid of Amory. We got rid of Crystal. I think that Kathy will be back in a friend role. But Kathy is such a, she's an interesting part of the show, but she's not like going to get down in the everyday stuff. And I, again, I stand by, we had Diana Jenkins. We had this one, that one. When you bring on one person, it's harder. I think we're going to do the Cabral Fuda move and bring on two newbies. I don't think it's going to be a Hilaria Baldwin. It's not going to be Bette Midler. It's going to be two new people that are just going to get in there. And by the end of the season, we're going to feel some 
change. We're going to have two newbies and it's going to be a show. Just like when Erica Jane joined, just like when Lisa Rinna joined, just like when Dorinda joined New York. It's going to feel different. Hopefully we're going to have a superstar like an Erica or a Dorinda that can go the distance. And I do not think it's going to be one person. I think it's going to be two. I think, and I don't blame Anne Marie. It's very hard to come into this group of all stars and get your words in and make a mark. So I think we're going to have two newbies. I think we're going to skew younger and we're going to see how that works. And I do think, uh, news shocker, they're going to be diverse. <sighs> Should I, we almost don't have time to talk about Alexia getting, announcing her divorce. I have so much to say about this. I have so much to say about Alexia divorcing. Is it real? Is it staged? Is it for the show? Is Alexia devastated? Is she happy that maybe this is going to give her a storyline? Is she happy that maybe this is going to save Miami? Miami is in more trouble than Potomac and is in more trouble than Beverly Hills because it is Jersey. Miami is not clear cut. It's not clear cut. If you get rid of Marisol, Kiki, Adriana, or any of that, it doesn't matter. They're not making a lot of money. The ratings don't justify the salaries because Alexia makes a lot. Marisol, I mean, Alexia makes a lot. Larsa makes a lot. And Lisa makes a lot. So Miami, it's not obvious. Who do you get rid of? I know you all hate Larsa. They're not getting rid of Larsa. Larsa is bigger than the show. Erica Jane is bigger than the show. She is. Larsa is worldwide, whether you like her or not, she's in a different category. So Miami, to me, when you start taking people off the board, doesn't make as much sense. It doesn't. So I think they have more to figure out in Miami. Beverly Hills was clearer, shocked about Crystal. Potomac, I'm talking about a huge pause. It's kind of like clear, one of the easiest franchises to figure out. So I expect the pause in Miami is now even more complicated. I don't know if this saves Alexia's job. It certainly doesn't hurt. I'm thinking that I'm such good friends with Anna Kinkoses. I do not take sides. So just because Anna and Alexia had this thing on last season does not mean that if I bring Anna on the show that I'm going to favor, I'm going to go against Alexia. I'm objective. Some weeks I hate Teresa, some weeks I hate Melissa. I mean, hate's a strong word, but you get my point. I'm team nobody. So maybe what I'll do is reach out to Anna since I'm friends with her and bring her on here to talk about Alexia's divorce. Would you guys like that? I will be objective. We're going to hear what she has to say. I think Anna's going to be objective too. So maybe we'll do that. Does everyone want that? Slip into my DMs and tell me. We've got to cover Alexia's divorce. I actually have a lot to say about it. I don't think it's as clear cut as uh, people think. Crystal's gone. Robin is gone. Neck is likely to go on. Ashley's pregnant. There's a divorce for Alexia. It was a crazy day in Bravo. I have to go. This isn't a whole show. This Friday, Sarah Fraser and I, I promise you, we will do over an hour on each of these topics and slow it down. We got to talk about Tori Spelling's podcast. We got to talk about Bethany's podcast. So we have a 